What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about some Texas Chainsaw Massacre news, and that is that the approach seems to be DLC instead of Battle Pass. Now, that's probably not all that surprising. We'll go over the news. We'll go over the pros and cons of doing the more traditional DLC, and we'll go from there. So this was an interview with a website, MP First, and they were just flat ass. They said, we'll be getting the traditional Battle Pass microtransaction model that's in almost all multiplayer games these days and the answer they were given were we've discussed this internally there's pros and cons to that model as of right now we're looking at a more traditional dlc plan without a pass so number one this is what i had expected this is actually what i had just assumed and we're saying in many many videos you know kind of leading in talking about how do you make this game successful long term does it stand a chance of lasting long term i've always just assumed you know just a dlc kind of package not a battle pass considering uh, the game comes out in less than a month i just feel like you would have heard something about a battle pass now they are right there are pros and cons to a battle pass i think it works in some situations it doesn't work in other situations and also there are pros and cons to a traditional dlc because when you hear a traditional dlc well there's a couple things to keep in mind and even things that i haven't necessarily thought about there's free dlc and there's paid dlc so one thing you know again when we talk about the longevity of this game keeping this game around long term you got to be very very careful with killers okay so more family members you got to be careful with adding extra victims and you got to be careful with maps not necessarily just adding them but do you charge for them do you charge for them or not? Because honestly, that has been all over the place with other examples. So you go to like a Predator Hunting Ground, some of those you had to pay for. You go to things like a Crash Team Rumble, which is a very different kind of multiplayer experience. And they do have a battle pass, right? And their characters are free, but they do like an early unlock period. And then it kind of unlocks to everybody. You have to do challenges. Um, again, I'm not opposed to the idea of, of paid and also not paid DLC. I think you just got to be careful with with what you actually charge for. I feel like maps should always be free. Uh, they would expand the experience for everybody. I'm not a big fan of charging people for the maps. In terms of the, the again, the killers and the family, look, okay, selfishly, I'd prefer everything to just be free, right? Like a DLC roadmap where every month you get like one additional thing and you don't have to pay. Also, considering that the game is paid, like you have to pay for the game. See, if it was just a free to play game, you know, having some sort of microtransaction, I guess that's probably actually where a battle pass would come. And see, it does get messy. It does get messy to charge a price for the game. Now, you can do Game Pass, right? But you can also buy it. And then also then every month or two, uh, you know, again, charge even more for smaller things. It's really going to depend on what those smaller things are. It's really going to depend on what those smaller things are. And if they're blocking off access to the main things that'll help this game survive long term. Honestly, best case scenario, everything's free. And then there's just kind of cosmetic packs that you can pay for. It's really, you know, it's the common place in video games, right? When there's microtransactions and they say none of it is like paying to win, like that kind of lingo, right? That's almost the same thing here. If you have a free DLC, you do free maps, you do free characters. The only thing you have to pay for is the looks. Maybe some of them are free. Maybe, maybe none of them are free. Uh, for me, it doesn't actually matter. If you have to pay for the cosmetics, that's fine with me because I just won't do it. But then I would hope you wouldn't have to pay for other things. So we'll see what happens uh, as the game gets closer. I hope and I would I would honestly almost expect a game like this they should have a roadmap uh, in terms of like the first couple months what it's going to look like. And so hopefully we get that sometime in August where they tell us okay, roughly, you know, September, October, November, we're thinking about another map, we're thinking about another family member, like here's a cosmetic pack we're going to do. They should be saying that within the next month and then when they do that, I'd imagine the pricing kind of conversation would then start. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.